Hi guys, thanks for stopping by Angel Gelding. I'm Alex, and today I've got a pretty creative and fun quick tip for you. We are going to be essentially drawing a silver mirror. Now what I mean by that is we are going to be using a couple different products to selectively remove the silver backing of a mirror to create a design. So for that, we will be using our multi-strip, our mirror remover, and then also a Sharpie permanent marker. Now I've tried this with Sharpie brand as well as Forey brand. Both of them worked really well, but I encourage you to try it with any type of permanent marker that you have available. Now this process can be done on both a freshly silvered mirror that you've created yourself or a commercially made mirror that you've purchased. So if you are using a commercially made mirror, you want to first remove the backing. So to do that, we would be using our multi-strip. And multi-strip is a multi-purpose paint stripper, hence the name. And the reason that we like multi-strip is it's very effective in removing the backing paint while also leaving the mirror intact. Sometimes a paint stripper can be pretty aggressive and it could actually deteriorate the silver layer, which we want to be able to do in our own controlled way. So I'm using my paint scraper here. And as you'll see, multi-strip is a very gel-like solid uh, paint stripper. So it takes a little bit of practice to work with, but really what you want to do is kind of glob it on, put a, a good amount of multi-strip all over the back of your mirror, and you want to make sure that you've got it fully covered. And it just takes some time to kind of work it in. I feel like it's similar to if you were icing a cake with jello, essentially. It, it can be a little tricky to work with. And as you can see, I'm using my gloves. I do want to make sure my hands are protected here. So I would just keep going, making sure to, as I said, cover the full backing. And then I need to let it sit. Multi-strip does not work very quickly, but it does work very effectively. What I'm looking for is to see that the backing paint underneath has started to bubble up. Once I see that it has, then I will go ahead and scrape off my multi-strip. And one of the nice things about multi-strip is it's pretty reusable. So whenever possible, you want to make sure that you keep the multi-strip separate from any of the paint that's peeled off. But that, that separated multi-strip can then be put back in my bucket and be reused over and over again. Okay, so once we've got that backing off, we can go on to the drawing parts. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, we have a lot of different types of mirror removers to choose from. And of course, the one you use depends on the type of mirror that you're looking to remove. For me, I've got a silver mirror here that's backed with a copper backing. And so I'm going to use my mirror remover. As I mentioned, that's a multi-purpose remover that will remove both the silver and the copper at the same time. But of course, use the remover that's appropriate for you. And as I mentioned, I am using a Sharpie permanent marker here. That's just the name brand that was available for me. I encourage you to try it out with the different markers that you have. And also one of the unique aspects to this type of technique is that you can use different tips, whether it's a fine or a broad tip, to get the look that you want. Now, one of the most important parts about this whole process is to remember, I'm drawing on the back of a mirror, and so I want to be working with a mirror image. The image that I'm drawing here will show up in reverse when I turn the mirror over. So there's a couple different ways to do that. What I've done here is I've just printed off on a document, just printed off my name and some nice type, and then folded the paper over. And now I can see it through in a mirror image. And I just go ahead and, and trace with the pen to make it a little bit clearer for myself. And I use this as a guide. And it's up to you, however you want to do that. Just always keep in mind that you're working with a mirror image. You're working with the reverse of what you're going to see on your finished product. So I'm going to go ahead and easy peasy, just take my marker and start drawing my design. And I'm still keeping my gloves on. I found that that's useful because then I'm not getting any fingerprints on the back of my mirror here, but that's really up to you. And what I want to do here is draw out the image and you can do some adjustments as needed. 
Now once you've got the outline of that image, as I have here, I've got my first letter I'm working on here, you want to go ahead and fill it in. Essentially what's, work, what's happening is anywhere you're drawing with your, your permanent marker will protect the silver from being removed by the mirror remover later on. So what I'm doing here by drawing an A with my permanent marker is I'm going to have a mirrored A on the front surface. So I want to make sure that I go ahead and color in the full piece. And sometimes you might find that it's a little inconsistent of an appearance with the marker. You might have some streaks and such, and that's fine. I, fi I find what's easiest is to just go ahead, do your best on that first go around, then let the marker sit for a bit, and you can actually fill in those gaps a bit later on. Now, once you've got the full image that you want, you should put the piece aside and let the permanent marker dry completely. I typically let it sit at least overnight. I want to make sure that that permanent marker is really well covered on the surface, that it's not wet at all, and that way it protects the silver as best as possible for the next step. And while you're working with your project, if you find that there's a part that you've drawn with your marker that you're just not quite happy with, or maybe after you let it fully dry, it just didn't seem quite what you wanted it to be, there is a solution to that. I've got another piece over here that I was working on the other day. Um, I'm just doing a monogram G there. And I wrote some lettering over here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I, I wrote some lettering here in my permanent marker. And thinking about it, I just, I don't like the placement of it. So what I'm gonna use is some acetone. Now you do need to be very careful in working with acetone. It's very flammable, but it does do the trick here. Uh, once again, use my Q-tip. And the benefit to using acetone is it's going to take off the permanent marker without damaging the silver layer. So I'm going to just gently rub over the part that I drew that I want to take off. And it's essentially working as an eraser for me here. And there we go. Now you can see that that extra lettering that was here uh, has been completely removed by my acetone, but my mirror is still fully intact. So I can just redraw my image and I'm set to go. Okay, so I have a piece here that I've drawn on the back and I did let this sit. I probably let this sit a couple days actually, just to make sure that it's all set to go. And now is where the, the magic, as you could say, comes in. I'm going to be using my mirror remover. This is a one part solution, so I just pour a little bit here in my cup. And then you want to use something that's very soft, such as a cotton ball or one of these Q-tips to remove the silver. What I like about the Q-tips is you can really get into the fine lines. In this technique, you can use those fine tip markers in a way that you wouldn't really be able to do if you used a paint technique. And so the Q-tip really helps to kind of accentuate those fine lines. So just dip a small amount in. And as we know, mirror remover works pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna rub around all the areas that are not covered with my permanent marker here. Now you can go over the surface of the permanent marker with your mirror remover. It's not necessarily gonna damage it, but I do think it's a good idea to avoid that when you can, just to make sure that you're protecting it silver mirror that you want to keep as best as possible. Now as you can see, I'm just taking my Q-tip and I'm going around these smaller lines here, trying to get into those nooks and crannies. I want to go right up against the line of the permanent marker so that I've got a crisp delineation between my silvered piece and my clear glass. Okay, now I've got my piece pretty well cleaned up here. Once I've finished using my mirror remover, then I do recommend that you go ahead and clean the back surface. For me, I'm just going to do that with a quick spray of my distilled water first. Now, as you can see, I'm working with a pretty small piece here, but I did want to show you another piece I've recently completed on a much larger scale. Here it is. So as you can see, you can work really in any scale, any size that you want. 
Um, now for the backing, I could put a design on the back of this. I, I could paint the whole back. I could leave it as is and have kind of a floating image of a mirror here. But let's check back on the piece that I've just finished. Go ahead and clean that front surface. Here you go. Here's my mirrored image. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple, straightforward process and it really doesn't require a lot of components. Um, so leave us a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions on this technique, other techniques you'd like to see. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos and check out our website, angelgilding.com. Thanks.